Good evening, Colin. Good, good evening, lunchtime. Neil. Good lunchtime, Maria. Good morning, George. Yeah. Good morning. Hello, Carl. Hi, Maria. I'm looking forward to learn a lot new things about the new modern charts. charts. My name is Maria Barnes, and if you haven't met me before, I am the chapter president of Access Lunchtime. Today, we're going to talk about improvements to modern charts in Access that are were on the roadmap for release sometime in August. So we're going to talk uh, about where it's at right now in that release cycle uh, as part of this. But that's why I chose this topic for this month was because I was hoping that last month it uh, at some point that they had started rolling out to the rest of you. So at the moment, modern chart improvements should be available in Access 35 or Microsoft 365 in the beta and current channel preview versions. And we should soon see it sometime in September. We're towards the end of September, so maybe it might not be uh, until October. Should soon see them in the current channel. And then whatever the release cycle is, the difference in the semi-annual, uh, probably sometime early next spring, you should be able to see those in the semi-annual channel of Microsoft 365. And then they will also be, the improvements to modern charts will also be in the next perpetual version of Access or Office. So small notes on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. What happens if you design a newer chart type, which we're going to go over what all those new chart types are as part of this presentation. But what happens if you design uh, something that's a newer chart type and you try to use them then in a version of Office that doesn't yet have those chart improvements. And the answer is that if you've got older versions that are uh, 2016 or greater, or like the 365 that it hasn't rolled out to, for example, if you try to open a new chart in an older version of Access that would be 2016 or greater that doesn't yet have the new modern chart improvements, then the new chart type will default to the combo type that has been in the newer modern charts uh, to begin with. So it just switches chart type on you. It might not display quite the way you would like it to, but it should display. If, however, you are trying to open a new modern chart in a version 2013 or older, then you're going to see just a blank space. So it's not, it should not like make access die on you or anything like that, but it should instead um, show a blank space. Uh, Jeff has asked, what about runtime versions? And that's a good question. I suppose that I am not as proficient about all the different versions of runtime uh, as some of the others were maybe are. So if you know the answer to Jeff's question, maybe type it in the chat. But um, assuming that the runtime versions are not getting updated right now, the next runtime version that will support this is probably the next perpetual version of Access. That's what I would expect for runtime and where the support would be. So uh, what types are they? You can see a diagram here of all the different options that you should start to have when you get this, these new updated modern chart improvements that uh, list all of them. And there were, I believe, four of them before. We now have 10 new types. An area type, which uh, has three versions of it, similar to the column type that is existing, plain stacked and 100% stacked. We have radar that has two options, plain and filled. Uh, and then all the others just have one option at the moment, the arc 
the box and whisker, the bubble, the donut, the funnel, the scatter, the waterfall, and the word cloud. And I am also going to add that, although we're going to talk a lot about this here, Colin Riddington has done a very nice article on modern charts. I'm going to put a link to it in here. It's got even more details than we're going to talk about and some nice references and pictures and stuff like that. So I would take a look on that. And there is a link to this in the last slide of the presentation and in the PowerPoint that that I will publish so you can have a link there as well, but I did put it in the chat for you. Besides the new chart types, there are some other charting improvements that have been done with this round. Uh, one of those is the chart settings, which is this section here that opens when you put a chart in design view. Both the data and the format panes are now customized depending upon which chart type you've selected. So uh, in the left here, and I showed the property sheet because that shows you what chart type we have selected. Some of the chart settings are in the property sheet. Some of the more design the initial chart and get it set up, uh, or the basics of setup anyway, are in a chart settings pane as a, opposed to in the property sheet. But I put them side by side here so you could see, like for example, for the area chart in the format tab, there's display name and series fill color and display data la label and grid lines. And then in the box whisker, they have those, but they also have the option to display data points to display a mean marker. Those don't show up for the area chart because they don't apply to that type of chart, but they do show up in the box whisker. So I find that nice that settings are hidden and displayed according to what is applicable to that chart type. Much more user-friendly, and I don't have to wonder and guess uh, what something is and why it appears to be doing nothing or something like that. One other improvement that they've made is the addition of grid lines. There is actually two types of grid lines, major and minor. And so I believe there's, if I recall, there's three settings, none, major, and minor to the grid lines. And they're only available in some of the charts. I have them listed here, bar, line, area, radar, combo, box and whisker, bubble, scatter, and waterfall. And I put a chart here so that you could see what they look like. This is major grid lines. And so um, they're at like 450, 425, maybe they're at these at 300, 250, probably at these points on here that they are as opposed to what's on the right side. And here you can see the lines like this, but they're super faint. Basically, in my opinion, they're unreadable. Several of us have made comments to Microsoft about that or critiques. You can see them better in the, the latest bid, uh, Bill, Carl. Let me see if that's true. So I'm going to pull up, uh, let's see, this looks like a area chart. Oh, they are much better. Wonderful. Well, before I publish this PowerPoint, I will redo that. Here, I thought I checked everything this morning. Love it when things are happening fast. So as you can see here, hopefully the grid lines are much more visible now. Um, so I am so happy that they fixed that because that was disappointing. Exciting that they're there, but disappointing that we couldn't see them. So yeah, hopefully by the time you get them, that will be in there. Some more charting improvements, particularly for pie, arc, and donut. Uh, there is, instead of just a checkbox, 
where you can say display uh, d the data lab label yes or no with a checkbox, there's actually a format. So none would be the same as not having it checked in the, the other uh, option. But um, the other options are number or percentage. So percentage is very exciting in my mind to have for things that are, you know, pie chartish. And not only do we have the percentage, but we also have the percentage decimal places. And then finally, we have a data label position. So what's illustrated in this chart here is the best fit. So access decides where it should go, depending upon, you know, the size of your slice and the value that it's going to show. Other options are inside center, which is somewhere around in here, inside end, which would be over this way more, outside the circle, and outside end. So those are the new options for that. And then finally, there's actually been changes to the underlining code. And the modern charts are now based on what is called the Ivy charting framework. And one of the reasons for doing that is to make it easier for Microsoft to add new charts types in the future or more features to the current chart types. So I do want to send a link to um, information about what the Ivy charting framework is. It's not apparently the same thing. When I just Googled it, I got an, a GitHub, Ivy GitHub machine learning framework. It is not that. It is instead a charting framework developed by Microsoft by the Office DVX team. Now we're going to go through and look at each of the different types and talk a little bit about what they are and you know how to distinguish them from each other, what their main uses are. Again, that link that I gave you earlier to Colin's excellent reference has uh, more data and more diagrams and, and stuff like that than I've got on these slides. Uh, but this is some of the basics. The area chart is used to combine elements of both the line and the bar charts. Uh, it's similar to a line, but filled in in the area below the line. And there are three types of of the area charts, just like there are three types of the line and bar charts, the plain, the stacked, and the 100% stacked. And typically it's used for displaying how values change over a period of time and drawing attention to total value across a trend. So let's look at an area chart, which was what we were looking at here. So you can see and maybe visualize if you would, uh, you know, if you were seeing this as a line chart, you would see this line, you would see this line, you know, and just the two lines. But the area chart fills in that area below the line to give you more of a, a visual representation of what that looks like. Then we have the radar chart. It is sometimes called the spider or a spider or web chart. And that is supposed to help you visualize multivariate data when they have similar values on the y-axis. And there are two types of those, plain and filled. So you can fill in the kind of line drawing that the spider points make with the filled type. And you can use this for comparing multiple variables where each access has its own variable. You can highlight strengths and weaknesses, visualize patterns and trends, or display cyclical data. So let's take a quick look at that. In this example, this is only one series. This is just some of homes sold. Oh, let me mention that all of these charts are based on this table where I have different months 
six calendar months and I have a number of homes sold and I have an average price of the home that was sold during that month. So this, all of these are based off the same table. So I only plotted the number of homes sold in this. I could have plotted a second series and it would have a different color and a different grouping for that with a different color line. That could be done if I had like number of homes sold and number of lots sold or something like that. Something that would have close to the same numbers on the axis. You can't plot, for example, the dollar value of homes sold along with this because those are two totally different ranges and you just can't even see the one, you know, for being consumed by the other. So that doesn't make sense in this case. But when you have multiple series that have similar values on your y-axis, then you can and see both of them or more than one uh, in, in one radar chart. We have the ARC, which is an alternative to pie charts. And that is fairly simple here. This is what that looks like. So if you think about it, if you were seeing this as a pie chart, it would be a circle and you get all the slices of your circle. The arc is only half of a circle, just the top half. And so your um, slices then go kind of across the arc or a rainbow or whatever you want to call it. Just kind of a different visual way of displaying rather than a pie chart. Then we have the box and whisker chart, which is also known as just a box plot. And I put a picture of it here on this slide because I wanted to talk a little bit about the components of a box and whisker chart in case you're not familiar with it. And I think that if you have done a lot of data analysis, you maybe are. I myself was not all that familiar with it. Uh, typically used to provide a visualization of the spread and skewness of your data. So some of the different components of it are the box, which is this box here. And that represents the interquartile range, also called IQR, or the middle 50% of your data. Then there's a median line, which is this one right here, and that is the middle actual value of your data. There's whiskers, which are like this one here and this one here, which are lines that represent the smallest and the largest of the values. And I think maybe this is part of the whisker as well. There are outliers, which there actually is none here, but here where we have each of our data points, and there is a data point here and a data point here. If there was a data point, for example, right about here, that would be considered an outlier. The smallest and largest are technically also outliers, but any of the data points that are outside of the box are called outliers. And then finally, we have the mean, which is the average of the data which is indicated in this case by the X. And so that gives you a little bit about some of the different components of that so you realize what you're looking at. And then I also want to give a little hint for this one. When I first started trying to get all these things to appear on the chart and to see them and visualize them, the default for the chart when it's set up is just kind of a fill that is a color. So you choose a color and, you know, most of the choices look to be these bright colors like the color that's used for the lines and the data points. But if you choose instead a lighter fill color, then you're able to see all these points better. Um, so let me just take a quick look at that in access. Here is that one, and let's take a look at what that looks like in design view because this one does have more options. So here on the format, the data points 
yes or no. And the mean marker, which is this X, are options. And so here, let's turn the grid lines on, see what those look like. Ooh, pretty. Uh, and this is what the minor one looks like, just so we can see that too. That's pretty busy. And then here's where the series fill, fill color, you know, most of the options that are used are these uh, across the top, I believe. But if you choose a lighter one under the color that you want for your series, you're going to be able to see it better. All right, let's move on here. The bubble chart. One of the purposes for the bubble chart, and actually, Adrian, I see your comment. I kind of agree with that, um, where the minor grid lines should be a little bit less invasive than the major ones. So that's a good point for us to take back. We are excited that they made them. Do I see the change pro changes to properties in design view? Uh, yes, actually. So we are still in design view here. So for the most part, if you if you haven't used any of the modern charts, that's not new. That's not an immediate improvement. That's also been the case with the original set of four modern charts that um, the access team put in with um, version 2016. But in general, you're in design view here, and it does have the changes that you are making kind of live in real time for you to see without even going into full view. So that's pre pretty nice to see. Back to bubble chart. Sorry, I got distracted by the chat. One of the main uses for a bubble chart is actually to be able to display three dimensions. The three dimensions would be the uh, x-axis along here, the y-axis, and then the size, a third dimension, in the size of the bubble. What I'm showing here is actually an Excel bubble chart because in Excel you can do three dimensions properly. Unfortunately, at the moment, access is not really allowing you to choose that third dimension. It does have a bubble chart, and I'm going to show you what the access version of this chart looks like. But it, the Y axis is instead being used for the bubble size. So it's really only two dimensions that access is right now using instead of this third dimensions. So in, in this case, I have the months across the X axis, the home values on the Y axis, and then the bubble size is the number of homes sold. So it's a really nice visual if it's done in 3D, but access is not quite there yet. We do have that comment into the access team and they're taking a look at it. Uh, but this is what it looks like in Access. I'm not letting you record the meeting locally. We do have this meeting being recorded, and Crystal will take that and put that on YouTube before our next meeting so you can view the recording from there. Uh, I will make the presentation and the Access database available to you after this meeting, but um, can't record yourself, sorry. Bubble chart, here we go. So this is what the same chart looks like in Access right now. So notice that even though um, we are supposedly talking about home sales and we have the x-axis and the y-axis, What's being shown here, and I did turn on the data labels just so you could kind of confirm that, the size of the bubble charts is being, uh, the bubbles itself is are being taken from the y-axis as opposed to that third one. So um, not 
it's it's in here bubble charts is in here but it's not quite 3d yet so you can use it though for 2d data but anyway i hope to get it in three days 3d soon the donut type that's another alternative to the pie charts however in that case this case of donut charts you can show multiple series and then each series represents a ring so we got um, example of a donut chart and this is again home sales the different series are the months and the outer ring is the values of the average home price sold and the inner ring is the number of homes sold so you know if you were trying to do this with a pie chart you'd have to have two charts one with one like the the dollar value and one with the quantity sold a separate one with the quantity sold but the advantage of a donut chart is that you can include both in one chart and then they become separate rings it can get a little confusing to read you know which is what etc cetera, etc cetera, but it's an interesting chart type and probably has its purposes the next chart type is funnel and that is typically used to show the flow through a process for example um, if you have a sales funnel and usually it either the largest value starts at the top or at the bottom depending upon how you want to display it but for example if you've got like a sales process you're trying to show a flow through you have lots of leads and then you have less qualified leads and then less actual leads in current pursuit maybe uh, or active you know and so as you uh, go through the sales process your number and your amount actually sold for the month or whatever uh, you know that's even less the funnel will display how quickly the amount narrows down so that's the most typical use for a funnel chart, some kind of process. And I'm going to show you an access funnel chart. Uh, but right now in access, the funnel charts are not really sorting like I think they should sort. And even if I sort the data underneath it, in fact, what I'm going to show you here is a query based on that table that's actually sorted in, in, in order. It still doesn't pick that up. The access team is investigating this. I, I believe they've committed to adding a, a sort by in the format tab, a new a feature called sort by and allow you to control how it sorts. I haven't seen that yet, but I'm hoping to see it fairly soon. So here's the funnel in access. In this case, we have, you know, home sales and in January, they're this value. And in February, uh, the average home sales was this value. So see how it goes out here. And then it does happen to go in. But in a typical funnel, we would want the highest price shown at the top you know, followed by the lower ones below. So thank you for answering that question of Niels. Colin, appreciate that. Scatter charts. That uses Cartesian coordinates to display values for one or more sets of data. And usually it's with the intent of trying to identify some type of a relationship or a correlation between the data. So let's look at what the access chart looks like. So here's the scatter chart. This is the dollar value, average dollar value of the home sold, and this is the quantity sold. You know, you might wonder if in a month there's some kind of relationship uh, between them. If there were, you would expect to see a line like going up or a line coming down or even like some kind of an arc or something. This, maybe we have a line going down, but then we've got points. So so I would kind of, if I was looking for a relationship between the two in this particular chart, I would pretty well say there's not a lot of relationship 
between the two types of data in this case. But that's that's something that you would be uh, trying to display in a, in a scatter chart. The waterfall chart, that is used to illustrate how an initial value is affected by a series of successive positive or negative values. And it's often used in finance to show how different factors might contribute to a final net value. For example, there is a setting that allows you to show the connector line. That's one of the ones. And you will notice that in the series, there is two series colors automatically provided for you. The first is blue, which is indicates an increase in value. And the second is orange, which indicates a decrease in value. And my example here is not financial data. I'm going to go with the same data. And all of those happen to be increases. But you can see how because they're all increases, it appears to rise. You know, and if you were looking for like a total value, you would read it from this value here. So you could get, for example, that, you know, the total sales, a total average sales price, you know, um, or something like that from this p picture. But what you would expect to see, you know, in something that showed like financial data and had both increase and decrease is, you know, some factors would make it go up and others might make it go down. And then the next one might make it go up either higher or not than the uh, original and you would end up with your net. And then the last new type is the word cloud. And that displays textual data and then the size of each word shown will indicate its frequency or its importance or, you know, the, the size of the actual value underneath that. And one typical use of this might be um, to show the results of the survey. You know, you'd have words of what your choices were and then, you know, the highest chosen survey result would be shown the biggest. In the case that of my example here, you can kind of see the idea. This is showing the sum of the homes sold, so the number sold uh, that month. So you see, right, January is the largest because it's right here in the center. Uh, April's not too far behind. March and June are a little bit smaller, maybe a medium type value. And notice that some of the words go the other direction. That just depends upon, you know, what, what it chooses here and, and that kind of thing. Um, and then the smallest ones are, are these values in February and May. And so you can kind of get a quick visual of something. All right. Well, that is about all I have to show you here. I will go to my last slide. And I will also put in the chat this top link that I have. And I'm going to do a little bit of a disclaimer on this. This is where you will look for to find out information about the new types as well as the existing types of modern charts. In my opinion, it's not really totally updated at this point. Um, there's some things that some of us have looked at and said, this does not look quite right. And so I do think Microsoft is still working on that documentation, but the link to it will not change. What you're going to see there between now and when the current channel release, actually modern chart improvements are released to current channel will probably change and hopefully improve, but the link here will not change. Then we're going to open it up here to questions. Um, so if you have questions, which I'm going to answer Phil's here. And then maybe if you, I, I didn't see any others that people didn't answer for me, but if you do have other 
questions, you can put them in your chat, or at this point, you can turn on your video and or your unmute your mic and ask questions. So to answer Phil's question about whether new charts allow for heading and subheadings. So Colin says both. I would have said no. Uh, let's see if we can find that. Um, let's go to the Your title and subtitle. All right. I'm going to go to my radar chart. So most, well, some of the settings are in the chart settings. So if you click on the chart itself in design view, you'll get chart settings. More of them are in the property sheet. In the property sheet, you get, uh, let's see, we want headings, right? So, it says has title. Oh, for title. title. And then subtitle. Yep. Yeah. So we have title and we have subtitle and you can change the font and, you know, that of each of them. That's your answer, Bill. Does new charting allow for data tables to be added below the chart? No, I haven't seen that. That would be nice. We were also hoping for some other things like more interaction where you could like click on something or hover over something and something would be shown. I haven't seen any example of that yet. Other questions that people have that maybe either didn't get answered or that somebody who did answer them in the chat feels would be imp important to point out or show a little bit more in the design view here. Uh, if you go back to your word cloud, worth mentioning, you can change the shape of the cloud. It's, it probably won't really show up with the example the data you've got, but you can have, if you go to the format side now, on the, that's it, chart says, so you can oh, have rectangle, rectangle, oval, or heart. And you can select whether it's horizontal and vertical or just one or other of those. Okay, so I think they're just horizontal. Yeah, I like that, actually. The horizontal and vertical mix makes me dizzy, frankly. <laughs> yeah, it's useful if you've got a lot of data to just to break it up a bit. But the one thing that I really wish it had got, and I don't understand why it hasn't, you can't change the color. It's black, whatever yeah, you do. Yeah, it's all black. black. Yeah, yeah, and it's, I mean, a lot of the time you get word clouds where they have different colors for different items. And yeah. that just makes it stand out more. But anyway. It does. It does. Yeah. Very Henry Ford. That's what I wrote in my article, in fact. <laughs> yeah. found any color you like, as long as it's black. I preempted that one. Good question here, Phil. He asks, here what about bba and what will we be able to explore i honestly did not explore that very much but let's take a look if we go here let's make something appear in here let's go to create an event here you know, maybe after update, we want to do something, right? Okay, so if we take a look at our chart, here's our chart zero. Uh, you're asking like what kind of individual properties you can access from VBA, was that the question that you were asking, Phil? Well, Maria, I was just interested in how accessible things like data points are, maybe changing the color of a, a bar or changing the color of something. You know, with the prior version of charting, it was, it was just very hairy when you tried to get into changing 
you know, data points or the, the shape of the point or something like that. And I just want to uh, see if there was any, I don't know, kind of uh, quick look at, you know, what's available. Yeah. So, I mean, here are the properties and there are quite a few properties in here. Most of the ones it looks like that you would see on your property sheet appear to be in here. You know, the different titles and that kind of stuff. I expect that there are others as well available through the properties and the actual name of the properties. But that is something I unfortunately have not really explored very much. And I certainly could have uh, in this presentation more about the VBA. Did you come up with one of the examples that you tried to do before with like the display points? No, not anything in the new charting. Um, yeah. You know, I worked with prior charting and at one point there were the old uh, help files that was yep. really like a, a, a lifesaver to be able to at least, you know, as cryptic as some of the information was, go through there and kind of figure it out. I would guess that there's probably not a lot of documentation on this. Not on the VBA part, no. I think Crystal's commenting a little bit here in the meeting chat about how much she used to be able to get inside the chart on the old type of charts. And there, we, we do know that there's not near as much that you can do with the modern charts so far. But you should be able to set most of the items that you have on the property sheet. I didn't find anything in that list that I could not obtain from the chart pane or from the property sheet, mainly from the property sheet. There in this list here? Yeah. I might have missed something. For example, I did look for show data, the question that Phil asked earlier, uh, because I'd love to be able to put that in on an occasional basis, and you can't do it. You, all you can do is open a query and, and place it underneath. So what about the things on the chart settings, like the data and the format? If I recall, those were not easily accessible via VBA. Are you finding I have, those? I haven't found anything extra I can get to, but it has already been said documentation is lacking on this. Yeah. And I, and I suspect even once the feature is released permanently, I suspect documentation will still be limited. All right, so Carl just put a link to something in here. Yeah, I put in a link to the documentation of the VBA possibilities, but you see what, basically you see what has not yet been implemented. So, yeah, so these are the events and methods and properties. So there are a lot of the properties and, and those with the link, you know, uh, they're in, have a hyperlink you can go and, and see more of. So there is a lot available. Um, there was a use of, of purple colored text box at the top there saying more links are coming people eater sorry content coming is coming but soon that oh important. for that's for those that they don't don't have a link very interesting this is a good reference as to what you have I'm not sure that there was much new added with this improvements, but there must be some. You think chart subtitle has been awa available for a while, Crystal? Yes, it has. Okay. And I put a link for a reference that I made, and it does not include, all, you know, the new properties and stuff like that that you might be able to set. And I meant to capture your images for your new types but they just weren't detailed enough so I left them out and I, I guess I'm just going to wait till I actually have the modern charts to update this page with the modern charts but it has a section with a table of all the properties that you can read and set okay another good reference I did review your 
article, Crystal, and it is for others that are on the call, it is a very good article as well. A little bit different take than Collins is. My reason for creating this was really for myself. I wanted a list of all the properties I could set, you know, yeah. all the different things, you know, in a way that I could copy paste. I mean, this is an HTML page and all that stuff is a text. It's not images. So you can copy and paste the names if you want to use them. Crystal, your second link uh, seems to be down, chart subtitle. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean for that to be a link. I'll edit it and remove <laughs> the link. I, I, copy, I copied the sh chart subtitle from my page that I just gave you a reference to because I thought okay. it was there. And, you know, you know, then I looked and it's like, yeah, it was there and I created this. Well, I, sh I should have used your source as my, what are all the new features? <laughs> so well, you it know, would have been I, helpful because you documented the existing ones before the. Um, well, you know, yeah. I would like to know what the new things are too. And, and you yeah. know, I want to, I want to make it so that it's easy to write VBA to use them. And I, I'm hoping that we they keep improving and, you know, adding more features to them and that kind of stuff. They were so limited the first time around, in my opinion. This will help both the new improvements to the just whole existing modern charts and the new chart types will help in making them more usable than the old ones because at, honestly the old interface is now just insane unless you're going through vba i find it too difficult to use i prefer if i if i have to go that route and i can't do it in an access type i prefer to dump the data of excel and do the chart in there so um yeah maria can you put the link to the access.chart page I tried to copy it down, and I copied it wrongly. The access.chart page. Oh, yeah. I thought I already with all... that. But, yeah, let me. Or somebody else, if they have already got it. Oh, no, Marie's, uh, sorry, Carl's done it. Okay. Sorry. Got it. Don't worry. No problem. I wanted to comment that when we were talking earlier about the development of this stuff, a very positive sign is that they've got a team working on these IV charting stuff that they're, they're actually developing something other than the limited access team is developing these charts. And I would expect, I would certainly hope that over time, if they produce better stuff, access will find it much easier now to incorporate these updates because they've now done whatever behind the scenes work is necessary to get the benefit of this ivy stuff does that make sense yes yes i i agree i think it's a very positive move mm -hmm. yep yeah and it's a whole framework that microsoft is supporting it's yeah make it more compatible with other office apps like excel as well if it's sitting on the same framework yes and one exercise I did not do is try to do the same type in Access and in Excel. I think that would be a, a nice exercise and an interesting one to compare the differences and find out what happens. I would like to see the interfaces be as close to each other as possible understanding that maybe access couldn't support all the options that Excel supports for each type, but I certainly would prefer not to see differences in how the two charts operate with visually the same settings. I'm hoping they get there and they might not quite be there as demonstrated in the, um, which one was that the bubble chart right now? Um, but yeah, interestingly, 
I've done it again. You go first, Adrian. So oh, quickly. I was going to say two things. One, yes, I agree. Consistency is extraordinarily important. I right. do agree, although especially for your average user of access, you know, you might be able to go in here to um, insert a modern chart, to choose your data, to choose a couple format options and get something reasonable for your average access user, super user, they are not going to be able to use the Excel to access interface uh, or access to Excel interface is probably the right direction like Neil can do. Yeah, so this will be much better for them. To be fair, that was a, a flippant, funny comment, I'm pretty yep. sure. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly, what I was going to say was that Excel has got a couple of, ch of Ivy charts that Access hasn't, but also and vice versa. So the ARC charts are not available, for example, in Excel, but they are in Access. But oh, Excel yeah. has, a ch has a tree map, which is, would have been a lovely one to have added. Very simple, very clear, but they haven't done it. Don't know why not. Next month's meeting, I am hoping to... <laughs> do a similar type of presentation, but on the new SQL Monaco editor. However, right now they've turned that off for me in beta channel. So I am crossing my fingers that they're going to turn it back on before next month's presentation, which is the last Tuesday in October. And uh, if not, I'll try to get something else in here and we'll delay that until December or January. But I don't think that would be as long of a presentation. There's not as much to talk about in that, but there are some neat things and stuff to point out with it. So I think it will be interesting and nice for people to have if they can get it right. <laughs> so. I will also add another tip, Crystal. So this is a good one when designing modern charts before you undo. I think that you also should save your form, maybe duplicate your form before you change your data source. Because I've noticed if you change a data source, sometimes it seems to like clear out all the settings that I have for the current chart. So that's a paint. All right. If that's it, I'll let everybody go. Thank you very much for joining us today and hope to see you again for a future access lunchtime. Thank you. Thank you. Maria. Thank yep. you.